It's a lot more easier when someone's asleep to cut into them because they're unconscious. And well, since you were unconscious, I took it upon myself to get myself a midnight snack. If you don't mind that. Don't worry. I brought my own supplies. You see, I used to be a somebody. A somebody that was going to help people. Treat them well. I wanted to be a doctor. And now, I'm nothing but a husk of that person that I was. And now I have to survive with eating the organs of humans. I don't want to look back at that old self of mine anymore. Because, well, I quite enjoy my new life of some sort. You see, I'm no longer a human. I'm some sort of a monster at that matter. You have tough skin. I can feel it. It was difficult to cut into your stomach a little bit. No, not your stomach. No, that's not your stomach. That's not where your stomach is located. See, even with my old age, I can be forgetful sometimes. Here is where I want. Use a little bit of elbow grease to cut into that part of you. Nice and so I can ease the bleeding just a little bit. I did have to make a quite large cut into the, your abdomen there so I can stick, lift up the slab of meat and get into the kidneys. Why the kidneys? You may be asking yourself. Well, it's only because that's my favorite part. <laughs> Cutting into a human body is somewhat of a therapy for me, honestly. Seeing a innocent person getting cut up and used for experiments or even just getting torn apart from the inside out just for someone's nutrients. I see it as the food chain, honestly. The weaker you are, the more stronger people will feast upon you. That's what the pecking order's for, right? <laughs> uh, here it is. The kidney is always going to be my favorite snack. <laughs> Put that in a bag for later. But, for right now, it's just you and me. <laughs> There's no use in struggling. You look pathetic when you struggle like that. You're tied down to that bed. 
There's nothing you can do. You are mine. You got that? I can do whatever the fuck I want with you. Do you understand me? I could just throw you off to the side if I wanted to. But I like you. You seem different. <laughs> you seem scared. What's wrong? You've never seen someone without eyes before. It's scary, I know. A lot more scarier in person than just in the movies, huh? Why do you think I wear this mask to hide my... disgusting face from others to see? No, oh, it looks like you're losing a lot of blood there. It'd be a shame if you didn't get stitched up. If I just left you here to die, bleeding out on your own bed, tied up. That'd be such a tragedy, wouldn't it? Yeah, but lucky for you, I like you. So I will stitch you up. And luckily, I found this sewing kit. So when you're in luck, consider yourself a little bit lucky, would you? I don't really like many people in this world. Quit flinching. I can't sew you up right if you keep flinching like that. Anyway, like I was saying, I don't like much people nowadays, especially because, well, look at me. Anyway. <sighs> but you I like, so I'm stitching you back up. But I might be back for more. Well, a guy has to eat, right? <laughs> so I'll be back for you. Maybe even tomorrow. Who even knows? It might be tomorrow. It might be next week. It might be a month from now. Hell, maybe even I'll just leave you for a year. Leave you scarred and mentally broken. Make everyone think that you're crazy that this blue creature of the night with no eyes snuck into your house and cut you open just to steal one of your kidneys to eat. That just sounds like a made up fairy tale, doesn't it? <laughs> But for you, you're all sewed back up. Oh, look at you. All so helpless on that bed. Here, let me cut those ropes for you. <laughs> you feel a bit better. You feel a bit more free. But you're still shocked, aren't you? That pain's going to be there for a bit. After all, I did just perform surgery. So uh, I would suggest for you to call out of work for about a week or two until you're fully healed up. I'll be back for you. A 
my name. <laughs> Call me Jack. Bye.